the pitch was essentially these two movies about perspective, which come out October 10th. And that's what we started with. And this third movie was born from that uh, this year, actually, uh, in the editing room. But yeah, I, you know, when I started doing this, uh, oh God, uh, you know, eight or nine years ago um, with Jessica and my producer, Cassandra, I mean, we, that's why it took eight or nine years. It's a tough pitch. <laughs> so I, I made it easy on myself as a first timer. This move, this title song, must have haunted you as a character and in, in your imagination for all these years. Yeah, I think um, I, I, while I was outlining the film, I was just listening to the song, and it fused the the script with you know the the mood of the piece that I wanted. All the lonely people, where do they all come from? And I think in the expanded version of this movie, you know, I looked at all of these characters going through their own quiet crisis I think everybody you know has their own thing that they're going through aside from these two people and 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 they all cope in different ways and I just wanted to explore that uh, and I used a very extreme case of uh, in terms of what the tragedy is when I started doing this I wanted to make a film about a relationship uh, essentially a love story um, and I thought the best way to do that was to to write two separate points of view, two separate movies that that show the same context, the sh- same time period from you know the male and the female perspective. Um, so I, I think with Jessica and Cassandra, um, we sort of I had this hymn script that I started with, and then Jess started asking me questions about this character Eleanor Rigby and where does she go, and um, that sort of opened up this idea for me to explore that and 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 sort of make a, f- a fully well-rounded you know uh, love story from both points of view and ultimately the truth lies somewhere in the middle i, I wrote a 223 page script which oh. is ridiculous as a first timer um so the script is 223 pages i'm a first time director with a couple shorts jessica is unknown at this point Cassandra's been a casting director, uh, and she's the lead producer on it. The odds were absolutely ridiculous. And I, I think, you know, thank goodness that Jessica's career took off because she got the Terrence Malick film Tree of Life somewhere right around the, 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 the point where we started working on this. And, and that really, I think, helped start moving things forward. You met when she essentially stalked you, right, at the Malick Film <laughs> Festival? Yeah, uh, I, t- 11 years ago, I had a short film. My first short film played at the the Santa Monica Lemley, and there are like 12 people in the audience, and all of them are the filmmakers. Uh, and uh, we walked out after I had finished. There were like four films that played back-to-back, and, and this girl comes running up to me, and she goes, I want to work with you. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, you directed that film, right? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, well, I want to work with you. And I was like, why? And uh, <laughs> essentially she was like, no, I really liked your film. And I was like, well, that's cool. And she's like, my name's Jessica Chastain. And she just graduated Juilliard. She'd done an episode of ER and that was it. And she sent me that and then invited me to go see a play that she was doing in New York with David Strathairn called Rodney's Wife. And I saw her walk out on stage in that and I was just like blown away by it how amazing she was and uh you know we became friends and very close and and then ultimately you know started making this project together i don't know where to begin to ask about how you shoot two films at the same time well we we treated it as one uh i treated it as one script one project one story and we shot the 223 pages in 40 days in new york two years ago um so that i just had a great crew and i had a great group of people and I think we were just as organized as we possibly could be and those overlapping scenes we treated as separate scenes so I think the phenomenal thing that the actors did was that it, especially Jessica and James is that they not only played the character Ele- Jessica played the character of Eleanor Rigby but then she turns around and plays his perception of her in a different scene that is exactly the same scene in a sense and he does the same thing so they had to play two characters and they did such a beautiful job because like that scene at the apartment at the end of the film when they're on the floor, we had to shoot that scene twice and we had to shoot it in different production design, different costumes. Like we do that scene once and they've emotionally exhausted themselves 
and then we have to go to lunch, turn around, reset up, and do it all again in a completely different way with a different intention, and they nail it again. So I think the emotional places that those two actors were going and the amount of work that they were doing was just like awe-inspiring to, to all of us. How did you balance the, the power and the force of each personality on film? Uh, I think, look, there's a generosity to the way Jessica works, and I think she was a producer on the film, so I think, you know, she... I think she met with James pretty much immediately once he signed on, and the two of them had their own sort of lunch together. And I think that was really helpful. And then I I had a, a rehearsal. We, we actually went to grab a beer, the three of us, and started looking through the script and talking through the scenes. And I think there was just a this sort of camaraderie that existed be- between the two of them that, you know, is a sort of an intangible. You sort of, you hope when you sit down with these people that there will be chemistry regardless. And the two of them just had this amazing chemistry to, from the get go, you know, they could, they were quipping and laughing and teasing each other. And, you know, I was sending them each music and they were sort of tr- sharing that music. I, you know, there was, there was a whole lot going on. It, I think when you make films this small, like it becomes like camp in a way. I think there's a, it's a much more familial experience. And, you know, I, I really love these two people now. I mean, they've, they've been so wonderful to me and they gave me the gift of, of being able to make this film because without them, you know, and, and my producer, like I, there, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you about it. I really lucked into this, this composer because there was another composer that it was initially supposed to do it named Anthony Gonzalez, who goes by the name of M83. And, uh, he was busy doing the Oblivion score at that point, and um, kind of different from this. Very one. different, um, and he just felt he was working on an album, and he was like, "Look, I'm too busy," and his manager slash agent was like, "Look, I have this diamond in the rough. I'd love you to at least like talk with him and like hear his stuff." So I spoke with him, and and I I asked him to do some sketches based on the, the movie because he really responded to the the two part and. Uh, he came back with this these sketches that were based on objects that existed within the film. So he created a score based in wine glasses or corrugated metal or, you know, things that existed within the space of, you know, that was in camera. Um, and, and ultimately I, I got to work with him on a score, which I don't think I would have had the chance to with other people and be as collaborative with him. Um, so that was really exciting. What, you mean you actually played the garbage can lids or something? I didn't play the garbage can <laughs> lids. I was just like, more garbage cans, more <laughs> garbage cans. And and did you want it at points to be not even musical, which it was at moments. Was I mean, I, I, I wanted very spare amounts of score in the film. I wanted to, to feel the silences and let the, the acting do the work as opposed to have score dictate the emotional space. Um but I think that's even more apparent in the other two films. In this film, I, was, I got to add a little bit more score and, and have a soundscape. I think we all lose people in our lives. That's, that's kind of the tragedy in, you know, of being a human being. I think we all go through loss. We all go through this thing. And, and, you know, and this is a very extreme case. I, it was based on something personal that happened to me. Uh, not as extreme as this, but, you know, something that, tore apart a relationship and you know I coped in one way and the other person coped in another way and I I think that was sort of what I wanted to try and articulate that was the thing that I didn't understand that was the thing that I think was interesting to me in terms of trying to capture on film or at least express is because we're all very different people you know who deal with things in very different ways and there's nothing wrong with that that's just at the end of the day, you can be angry at yourself because you dealt with something in one way, but once time has passed, once you're beyond it, you realize you were doing all that you could at the time, and that was the way that you needed to deal with it, and you can't be angry at another person you know, for dealing with it in one way. It's just th- the way that they were coping, and I think we all do that, whether it's you know, getting in a, fi- a really silly fight at home over, you know, I don't know, who left the TV on versus like you know, something as extreme as this. But I think I just wanted to look at relationships and how, you know, how we cope as individuals and, and, and how how ultimately there is no right or wrong. 